Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We want to talk you through some survey problems using Venn diagrams. My first problem here, we have 100 people that were surveyed on their preferences for tea and coffee. So you may have a preference yourself for either one or both or neither. So here it says that 62 responded that they liked coffee, 36 liked both, 17 liked neither. You may first notice that if you add 62 and 36 and 17, you get more than 100. And that's because all of these numbers don't just simply go in the diagram. But let's go ahead and set up our diagram. I've got my universal set, which will be all 100 people fit in here somewhere. And since we know that the survey was about tea and coffee, I'm going to go ahead and label this circle T or T obviously, and then C for coffee. You could label them A and B, but I'm going to label them T and C just for clarity here. Okay, 62 people liked coffee. If we try to insert that information into the Venn diagram first, there's a problem. I know nothing about both regions in my coffee circle so far, and 62 just liked coffee. So how many of the 62 go here and how many of the 62 go here? I don't yet know. If I look down the list at 36 liked both, liking both means I'm in a very particular region in my Venn diagram. 36 liking both is very specific. That means I'm in this section. I'm in the intersection of T and C. I like both tea and coffee. So we can go ahead and write that one in first. And then 17 liked neither. Well, neither means I'm not in the T circle and I'm not in the C circle. That must mean I am outside of all the circles. So 17 is my number that goes down here just in my universal set. So now we want to go back and see, can we use this 62 liked coffee? We already used the 36 liked both and we already used the 17 liked neither. 62 liked coffee. Now, if I look at my coffee circle, I need a total of 62 in my coffee circle, in my C circle, and I already know that 36 go here. So what this tells me is that 36 plus some other number is supposed to give me 62 total in the coffee circle. And if we figure out 36 plus something equals 62, in other words, take 62 and subtract the 36 that are in here, then that's going to give me that I need 26 in this C circle, but not in the intersection here. Okay, so we've used our coffee information, and now we want to know how many liked only tea? Well, we don't have that information yet. How could we get it? The way we get it is from using the idea that 100 people total were surveyed. If 100 people total were surveyed and I have every single region labeled except for one, I should be able to figure out this remaining region. So if I add up 36 and 26 and 17 and I subtract those from 100, that will give me the people that are left to go in this remaining blank. If we take 36 plus 26, remember that's 62, plus another 17, that's going to be 79. And so if we take 100 total people and we subtract the 79 that are already in our diagram, then we get that 21 people are going to go in this part of the T-circle that is not in the intersection. So we have 21 people there. But we now know that 21 people liked only T and not anything else. Our last question, how many liked only one of the two? So that is actually this number. These people liked only one of the two, and also these people only liked one of the two. The 36 people in the middle liked both, so they didn't like just one. The 17 people out there liked neither. So the 21 and the 26, we add those together, and we'll get that 47 people liked only one of the two. So here we have another survey of 320 people. They were surveyed on their feelings of cats and dogs. So thinking about my sets here, maybe I label one C and one D for cats and dogs. Easy to interpret there. This top statement here says 110 only liked cats. If I only like cats, that means I'm not in the intersection. So that means I'm in the C circle, but I'm not in the intersection. So 110 is very specific. It should go out here in the C circle, not in the intersection. We can go ahead and place that one. Our 125 only liked dogs, a similar thing. If they only liked dogs, they're in the D circle, but they're not in the intersection. So the 125 go out here. We also know specifically that 25 liked neither, and neither is very specific. That's going to be outside of both circles in our Venn diagram. So we've got that conquered there as well. 
And the question asks us how many people liked both cats and dogs. Well, of course, isn't it going to ask us the one that we don't know? So how do we find it? Well, there's only one region left. And just like before, if we know the total that were surveyed, which is 320, I could add up all of the other regions and subtract them if I only have one region left and find that. So if I add 125 and 25, that's 150. If I add that 150 to 110, that's going to be 260. So I take my 320 total, I subtract the 260 people that are already in my survey there somewhere, and I get that there are 60 people left that must be in this intersection, and those are the people that like both cats and dogs from the survey. All right, let's take this up a notch and look at a three-circle Venn diagram survey problem. We have 500 students total. They are surveyed on their use of different modes of transportation. So if you look through this list, you can see we have public transit, we have automobiles, and we have bikes. So if I just use the first letters of those, I'm going to label one of my circles P, I'll label one of them A for automobiles, and I'll use B for bikes. Now I have all of this information here. I need to figure out what I can use. Think about starting in places that are very specific when you do this in your Venn diagram. It is extremely difficult to use this 290 at the beginning. 290 use public transit. If you look in the P circle, how many regions are there in the P circle? There are four different regions in the P circle, so I cannot start off by using the 290. There's no way for me to narrow down from the beginning how many of the 290 go in which of these sections. So what I'll want to do is start at a very specific place. The most specific place on a Venn diagram, especially with three circles, would either be when we have something in the none category out here, because that's just going to be one giant region outside, or if we can start in the very center where we have the intersection of all three things. Now, if you look at the bottom of this example, it ends with how many used none. So since I'm trying to find this in the end, it's probably not written in the problem as I look back through it, and you'll see that it's not. But in this case, if we scroll all the way to the bottom, we can notice that 20 used all three. So 20 of them used public transit, automobiles, and bikes. So that will go in the intersection of all three circles, those 20 people. If I try to go back up and use my 290, you notice that I still have three regions of P and I can't use that 290 yet. But if I look at some of these where it says I used, for example, automobiles and public transit, then we're talking about the zone where A and P circles overlap, right? We're looking at that. And since I already know 20 people go here and a total of 60 must be in the overlap of circles A and P, how many would I put here to get a total of 60 in there? I would put 40 more because I'll have 40 plus 20 equals the 60 and now we've used the 60. So we're going to kind of work out from the center here if you can kind of tell. So let's figure out what it would take to figure out this region here. Now if we look at that region, it's in the overlap, the intersection of the P and the B circle, right? So that will be information about public transit and bikes. So I look for that in my list. Here I have 100 used bikes and public transit. So that tells me that in this shared region of P and B, I must have a total of 100. I already have 20 here, so 20 plus what will give me 100 total? Our answer is 80, and now I've used this 100 statement here. We can do a similar thing to find out the rest of the overlap between the A and the B circle. That will be automobile and bike information. So we have 30 total people in the automobile and bike overlap. So 20 here and something here giving me a total of 30. That means I will need 10 more people to go in there. And so I have a total of 30 that used both automobiles and bikes. And so now I can go back and do things like use my 290. So I had 290 total that used public transit. So in the total P circle here, I should have 290. Well, I already have 80 and 20, that's 100, plus another 40, that's 140. So if I already have 140 and I want to make 290 total, then I would need 150. You can just take these three numbers and subtract them from the 290, and that will give you what will go in there. So we've used our 290, but we wrote down 150 because our entire P circle needs 290 people. So if 120 used automobiles, that means everything in the A circle needs to add up to 120. Well, I already have 40 and 20 and 10, and 40 plus 20 plus 10 is 70. So to make 120, if I already have 70, I could subtract this 70 from 120, 
And that would tell me that 50 people go out in the A circle alone. If I want to use this final number here, this 160 used bikes, I look at my B circle. I need 160 total in the B circle. I have 80 plus 20, which is 100, plus another 10, that's 110. If I subtract these 110 people already in the B circle from the 160, then that means I would need another 50 people out here as well. And that will take care of all of the information that we have on our list. So now it says, how many used none of the above? Well, we use the same idea that we used in the two circle Venn diagrams. Obviously, all of these numbers must add up to 500, including the one that we're missing out here, right? So in other words, 150 plus 40 plus 50 plus 80 plus 20 plus 10 plus 50 plus something out here, right, must equal 500. Well, how do we do that? Well, we'll just subtract all of this stuff from 500. If we add all of these up, we actually get 400 from all of this. So if we subtract 400 from our 500, we'll get that we'll need exactly 100 people out here that used none of the above. So our answer to this question here would be 100. So you notice that these three circle Venn diagrams are a bit more work than the two circle Venn diagrams. You'll have to go through your list more selectively. When you do these, just make sure that you start in the most specific place in the diagram possible. If you can start out here in the universal set, you can start in the central overlap of all the sets and work your way outward. That's probably going to be a good rule of thumb as you're working through these problems. Okay, everyone, hopefully this helps you with your survey problems and using your Venn diagrams. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.